Hello again, this is Mike with Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And today we're taking a look at a, uh, an innovation of the MPC era, the electronic sound of steam, or sometimes called the mighty electronic sound of steam. And so, uh, you know, what is it? Well, sometimes at a show or in a box from eBay or whatever, you will come across a tender with one wire sticking out of it like so. Usually these streamlined tenders, but sometimes it can be the uh, the square back tender as well. Or in your steam locomotive, same thing, one wire with this little pigtail connector coming out here, um, all by itself. So what is that? Well, that is an indication that your locomotive, your tender, they're equipped with the electronic sound of steam. Now what this is, is an early attempt uh, a 1970s attempt in Lionel's part to add some steam sound to their locomotives. Um, this is an idea that I believe Mark beat Lionel to the punch on this one with uh, what they called their sound o power tenders. And in the case of Mark's, I'll just grab this Lionel tender here for example, because I don't have one of the Mark's tenders. Um, but with the Mark's tenders, there would be a wheel under the middle with electrical contacts on it. And as the wheel would spin, the it would complete contact with the center rail and go to a uh, white noise generator inside the tender that would make a chug sound ch -ch 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 as it went around. Don't confuse this with Lionel's um, mechanical sound of steam, which was also a wheel, but uh, contained what might be called magic beans uh, or beads inside. And as it spun, the, the sound of the beads falling would make the steam sound uh, a rudimentary one. So in the MPC era, early MPC era, Lionel came out with their version, their sound of steam. Um, there's some debate over which system sounds better. A lot of people like the marks better. Some Lionel purists insist the Lionel sounds better. But what the Lionel does have that the Marks doesn't is actual synchronization with the actual drivers of the locomotive. Uh, here is one of the units. And here the, the activator for the sound of steam is built in along with the headlight and the smoke unit. So here's your smoke unit heater. Here's the bellows. And as the side rod pushes forward, not only does it if I can make it happen here, push the bellows that's inside there, pushes there. I'm sorry, there's the bellows. Yeah. So that through this lever pumps air through the smokestack to make the, the smoke go puff, puff, puff. But also on the sound of steam units, right here, you see that in the camera right here, these two little brass contacts as the sty rod goes forward, the contacts come together and feed power back through the wire, which is this wire over here, through the tender connection, and provides a hot sound for this circuit board, which then to this speaker, and then out through the common goes out through the wheels, and every time the side rod goes forward, it completes that connection and you hear a chug. When it goes back, the connection is broken and silent. So you get one chug every time the side rod goes forward. Okay. Now, uh, another aspect of this, because everything's wired together, it also tends to, um, there's also the tendency when the chug happens that the light bulb dims a little bit. So you get a flickering light bulb uh, along with the smoke and along with the sound of steam. So, okay. Um, Lionel introduced these, these in the early years of MPC, 1970 to about 73, were all throughout the Lionel line from starter set locomotives like this, all the way up to the premium reissues of uh, Lionel Hudson's all had the sound of steam unit. As the 1970s progressed, they dropped them from the starter set line and the boards were used almost exclusively in the upper end steam. 
early ones, 1970 to about 72, also had an integrated electronic whistle. Uh, there was some sort of a problem with either the whistle circuit or with the supplier, and uh, the whistle circuit was dropped after about 1972, uh, but then it came back later with a redesigned electronic whistle, um, I believe in 1979, 1980, uh, the whistle made a return. So if you come across one of these tenders, the very first thing you should do is take it apart. And here's why. The soundboard sits upon this two-sided foam tape. And over the course of after about 30 years, this tape, this foam disintegrates to nothing. Uh, and whereas these tenders are all now 40 to 50 years old, uh, this is the condition that you'll find them. You'll open it up and there'll be a circuit board laying on top of this. This is grounded um, to, the, to the track. So basically you've got a live circuit here and uh, with nothing to protect the circuit board, from shorting against that, you're going to fry it. Um, so the very first thing you should do, even before you put it on the track with power, is take your tender apart. There's usually one screw here and either a second screw on the back or usually more of a tab and slot. So once you take your one screw out, which this one's already done, you just peel it apart. And this one I've already modified. You want to replace the foam tape that was there with something else that I'll act as an insulator. Here I was using some weather stripping tape for both the speaker and if you can see it in here uh, and for the soundboard. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing but it works, holds everything in place and then I um, added a little extra oomph to it with some uh, vinyl electrical tape but um, this works. Again it's not the prettiest on the inside but you need to have something, one, to hold everything in place and two, to keep it from shorting out against the frame. The original tape, the original foam tape has got to go. Um, so uh, you put this back together the way it came. You put the tabs in first, slide it back together. And again, I wasn't real neat with this. Oh, yeah, make sure the wire comes out through one of these holes up here. Doesn't matter which one. There we go. Come on. Fat fingers. Okay. So get your wire through there first, then reattach your tabs. This is from my original, my very first Lionel train set from Christmas 1972. This was the Silver Star set. Again, this was a pretty much a bottom of the line starter set. Uh, in 1972 and it had a sound of steam. Uh, other sets from that era, like the Allegheny, uh, some of them included the whistle, some of them did not, depending on whether, uh, I think that was an uncatalogued set and I think it depended on who the uh, customer was, uh, the retailer, whether they got the deluxe version with the whistle or the less pricey version without. But in any case, so sometimes you find the electronic whistle with these. So you put it back together. When you put it on the track, all you do is connect the two together. That completes the circuit. You put it on the track and as it goes around, you get a chug. So let's take a listen to the sound of steam or sometimes in Lionel's marketing, the mighty electronic sound of steam. Okay, one last thing before we put it on the track. Uh, what if your board doesn't work. You fix the foam, you've got it hooked up, and you're not getting any sound. Yes, it's possible that the board is blown. And if that is the case, uh, unfortunately, I don't have good news for you. Replacement boards are not available. Um, this part has not been made in 40 plus years, and I know of no part supplier that still has some in stock. You might get lucky on eBay or at a show finding you know a stray tender that doesn't have a locomotive with it and uh, that has a board that works. Uh, you can roll the dice on that. The other option is uh, if you are better at electronics than I am, um, try to trace down the circuit and replace components with um, similar um, components until it works. Um, trying to trace down stuff on the the PCB here, um, you know, some, some of these solder joints were not 
real pretty. Um, and over the course of age, you know, uh, you know, good luck trying to track down what's going on with this, uh, with these solder joints here. So unfortunately I don't have really good news on that. If you want it in original condition, um, if you want to spend some money and get this, the, the sound, you can always, you know, drop in a modern sound unit into it, but you're going to be spending probably a hundred dollars, which is more than likely more than uh, what you've spent on the locomotive if it's uh, one of the starter set versions. So uh, unfortunately, those are really your, your only two options. One, try to find one that works and swap it out or um, try to swap out the electronic components. I can't give a specific wiring diagram on any of these because there were many different suppliers and board types that were used during the course of production. Um, so there's not one stock answer of replace this capacitor or replace this resistor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's kind of a trial and error, unfortunately. Um, but if yours does work, you know, yeah, if you don't like the sound, you can always disconnect it. Um, but you know, at least you have that option for an early uh, type of sound system. So, uh, let's take a look and listen to uh, what it's like on the layout. Okay, so here on the layout, uh, I've got two examples of the Sound of Steam. Uh, we've got the 8141, uh, again from the Silver Star set, my original Lionel set from Christmas 1972. Uh, Sound of Steam, Smoke, the headlights burn out again. I just changed it last year, but it burned out again. Um, and we also have the uh, 8204, uh, 442. This, I believe, was either from the Allegheny or the Chesapeake Flyer set, not sure which. Uh, this one uh, is just Sound of Steam, Smoke, Headlight. There are other ones in this body style that, uh, that have the um, electronic whistle as well, but not this one. I'm going to start with the 8141 because I think it has the nicer sound of the two. It's One, it's not as loud, and two, I think it's a little um, better overall. There we go. Okay, so you get a feel for that sound. Now let's turn on the uh, 8204. Much louder, a much harsher sound. Much more electronic sounding. Got my 3D printed caboose there on the end. Uh, so now everything about that model except the frame uh, was printed. It's got my trucks and uh, my shell. But uh, riding on the Lionel SP caboose frame. And both of these would be smoking, but I'm currently out of smoke fluid. And so is my local hobby shop. So uh, we're running dry right now. I can smell the smoke units trying to uh, to work, but there's just uh, 
not enough in there to, uh, to make the visible difference right now. Just enough residue to, uh, to give me the smell. So there we go, the mighty electronic sound of steam. Some modules again sound better than others, but an early sound system for MPC steamers. A far cry from the real sounds and all the stuff that we have today. But for 1970s technology, it's not too shabby. So, if you should happen to come across one of these engines or tenders with a wire sticking out, now you know what it is. Maybe you can make a match pair. Whoa! After further investigation, the NTSB has determined that the cause of this derailment was the screw <laughs> that held on my caboose truck. Uh, the machine screw had um, unscrewed itself. So there was the screw. This is where the caboose and the uh, truck came to rest. And here's where the cars came to rest around the curve. So uh, luckily no serious damage. The only thing to hit the floor was a piece of PVC pipe. Um, and uh, so we will live to steam another day. So as I was saying, um, if you come across a, a locomotive tender with these wires from the MPC era. Now you know what it is. Hopefully you can find a board that works and add some uh, inexpensive uh, sound to your layout. Not the greatest, but hey, for 50-year-old technology, it's not terribly awful either. Uh, so the, give the mighty electronic sound of steam a try. Um, it ain't real sounds, but it it's better than nothing. <laughs> Until then, we'll keep the trains running. We'll fix our derailment. And, uh, well, if you like it, like it, share, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, and we'll catch you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks. <laughs>